Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about inspiration, the age-old question that creators have had throughout the centuries. Do I wait for inspiration to arrive? And what if it never shows up? So today's theme is inspiration. We're going to hear a few insights from watercolor artist Thomas Schaller on his thoughts on inspiration. And stick around until the end. I'm going to tell you the three things that I do to keep myself motivated and inspired when I'm not necessarily feeling like painting. So a few months back, I had a really nice discussion with Thomas Schaller. He's a fantastic artist, he's a great person, and he has a lot of great insight into the creative process. And one of the most interesting things that we touched on during that discussion was inspiration. Listen to what he has to say about inspiration. I thought this was so interesting. So I love this quote in your book from Chuck Close where you say, inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. Can you talk a little bit about inspiration and and what that means to you and, and a little bit about this quote? Yeah, I read that quote a number of years ago and uh, my feelings about it have changed. I used to think that was a very, I don't know the right word, insulting, I guess, way to speak about other artists. Uh, but it never left me. I don't know when I read it, probably eight years ago or 10 now. Over time, though, I've adopted that as a personal kind of motto, is that I think I do counsel my groups to not beat up on yourself by sitting around waiting and waiting to be inspired. I hear this from other painters all the time. I just don't know what to paint. I don't, I just don't feel it today. It's not working. I'm not dismissing those feelings, they're real, I have them too. But I think if we just are honest with ourselves, that's an unnecessary self-critique. I feel those things. What I do is I just grab my sketchbook or I'll just sit down and just start to doodle. If you concentrate on the process of mark making and art, if you wanna call it that, um, that's what counts. I think we beat up ourselves a lot when we're trying to envision a finished painting and we can't come up with what we think is a good idea. I've found other ways to find good ideas where I don't just sit and think about a painting I might do. I sit and or I walk around or I ride my bike or whatever I like to do. And I think about who I am and what makes me want to paint in the first place. I'm already inspired. I don't have to go out and find it. I just have to sit down and get to work. I mean, that doesn't mean I don't take days off and just say, screw it, sure. But yeah, not that many, to. if I'm honest, not that many. But, you know, we all have lives to lead. Yeah. So I guess in fewer words, what I'm trying to say is if we just aren't so hard on ourselves and just remember why you like to paint, not what you want to paint or how you want to paint, but why you want to paint. It just starts to flow. It's, it's the process of doing it that's inspiring. You've already got the inspiration in here. You don't have to go out and find it. You got it. So I agree. I, I have found over time that if I can just get myself to the easel and get started on something, get started. And if I can take away as many obstacles between me and getting that easel, like get my supplies ready ahead of time, have my paper ready to go. Then if I'm, if I'm getting there, even after a long day, if I can get started, I know I'm on the right track. And it, it, it's kind of like exercise in a way. You know, you, someday you don't feel like doing it, but after you're done, you, you never regret that you spent time doing it. No, you never do. Um, and I say this and I mean it. Uh, a day spent doing a bad painting is better than a day usually spent not painting at all. So I'm a lot less harsh on myself if I do a bad painting. It's mm. fine. I've got stacks of bad paintings. <laughs> But usually they serve a purpose. They teach yeah. me something or I work something out, even if I don't know it yet. Yeah. 
think as I get older, I've realized how much I have learned earlier that I didn't know I'd learned until now. So when I just sit, I feel unenergetic or uninspired, but if I just sit down at my easel and start doodling, that's not wasted time. Right. I'll teach myself something that I'll be able to use later for, you know, hopefully a better painting. I also think this concentration on the finished painting is a problem. I'm not over that. I'm not immune. I want to do nice paintings, but what those aren't going to happen if I'm thinking only of the end result. If I just get completely immersed in the moment of painting and I'm very present I don't know, this sounds very Southern Californian, but it's true. Yeah. I just tune out everything else and just get lost in that process. I'm so happy. Um, I may do a good painting and I may do a crappy painting, but it's okay. It's fine. It's all good. So the reality is, we live busy lives. A lot of us have work, some of us have families. There are other things on our plate that need to be taken care of other than just painting. But it's not always easy to flip that switch between normal life and your creative practice. So I'm gonna talk about three things that helped me transition from those parts of my day to my painting part of my day. Step number one, try to remove obstacles. I find that the more obstacles that I have between me and getting in front of my easel and painting, the less likely I am to do it. So some practical things, get your supplies ready the night before, fill up your water bucket, get some fresh water. If you need to cut some paper, have your paper ready to go. The, get these practical, easy things out of the way so when you have creative time, you can jump right in to the creativity and not the preparation. And I've talked about this in other videos. If you can have an idea of what you wanna paint, if you've already selected a few reference photos, something to get you going. So that obstacle of deciding what to paint and endlessly scrolling through photos to find the right thing is removed. Try to handle that beforehand if you can. Step number two is create a transition between your responsibilities and your creative time. And this can look like going for a short walk, sitting and listening to music for a few minutes, read a little bit, take a few deep breaths, give yourself a little bit of space between your normal life responsibilities and your creative time. Dig into the things that inspire you, that make you feel alive, that bring that little bit of spark to you. For me, it's listening to music. So if I can turn on some nice music, I start, it just flips that switch for me. I start to think about something else. I get carried away with something that is moving to me. And that can help transition from your busy life to your creative time. And step number three would be find some art to look at. If you have a place where you save art that inspires you, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's a folder on your computer, whether it's art books, flip through a few pages. Sometimes if I'm really not feeling like painting, if I just get in there and start looking at brush marks or the atmosphere that's created in a scene, find some art that inspires you. Take a second to appreciate your craft. Take a second to let yourself be immersed in creativity and a little bit of inspiration. And I find that those things can help that transition between normal life and your creative time. Be a little bit more intentional about it and less driving on just feeling. Because the professionals don't always feel like showing up, but they keep showing up day after day because they know that it's what they want deep down inside and they know that it's healthy for them to continue their creative practice even when they're not necessarily feeling that spark of inspiration. I do wanna add one caveat to this. I have had times in my creative life where I've kind of gone the opposite direction. I don't give myself a day off when I probably need a day off. I don't give myself a break when I probably need a break. And I had this weird irrational fear that if I wasn't showing up even for one day or doing something, some little bit of painting or something, that I was gonna lose it that I, I had to keep proving to myself that I could paint, and so I had to show up every single day. But what you don't wanna do is get burnt out. 
And so for some of those people that are maybe over-disciplined in this area, give yourself permission to take a break. I know this entire video has been about how to show up when you don't feel like it, but I know there are probably artists out there too that need to give themselves a little bit of a breather. For those people, you might need to take a whole day off or a week off. Take some time away, maybe enjoy some things in some other mediums, maybe watch some good films that you like, maybe just step away and don't think about painting for a little while. And so I think finding that balance between pushing yourself when you know you need to push yourself and on the other end of the spectrum, giving yourself a break, allowing yourself to regenerate and refresh your mind is also important too. So I would love to hear from you guys. Leave a comment below. What is the one thing that you do to help you get inspired to keep creating, to keep moving forward when you might not necessarily feel like it? Thank you once again for spending some time with me here today. Keep working at it, guys. Keep coming back to your art and keep moving forward. And I'll see you next time. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've got some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well.